news to dispense. It's probably not even news anymore. It's probably closer to olds. But this week, the NHL paused the season a little bit early. They usually do it every single week. Or sorry, every single year for the Christmas break. Uh, they canceled or suspended or postponed 33 games that they're rescheduling. They withdrew for the Olympics. Players and coaches around the league have responded, starting with Connor Hellebuck, who caused all of this to be overkill. Steve Eisenman, who said, at the end of our day, our players are testing positive without symptoms and very little threat to their health. Why are we testing guys with no symptoms? And he also continued to say, players have never come to us to shut it down. They want to play and uh, they'll do what they have to do to get through this. League is considering easing some protocols, which we talked about last week from Anthony's anonymous source. So, Anthony, I'm going to start with you on this. Where does the shutdown leave the NHL after Christmas? Well, first off, without without getting political, because we don't want to do that, um, this is just this whole thing is just ridiculous. Now, um, there's literally one player in the na- entire National Hockey League, Tyler Bertuzzi, um, that is unvaccinated. Uh, 98% of these guys are asymptomatic. Um, why, why are we even testing players who feel totally healthy? Like why? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And, you know, Adam Silver, the NBA's commissioner, I don't know if you guys saw the tweet. I, I think I sent it in our group chat. I think it was mm-hmm. yesterday. Um, you Today, know, I, I, guess, I guess when he was asked about pausing, he said that, listen, COVID's not being eradicated. We we have to we have to learn to just to just live with it, and he's right. It makes it makes no sense to to be postponing these games and players put in COVID protocol. They are totally healthy. Um, it it's just enough. Enough is enough. And that tweet I sent you guys earlier today um, about the NBA players are facing the same thing, and they have a full slate of games. Like just stop. Enough is enough. And I loved Steve Eiserman's comments. It, it was great to see an executive like him, you know, speak out. And kind of say what everyone's thinking, which is what I just laid out, is that these players um, are, are vaccinated. Uh, there's no harm, in my opinion, even if they're positive but healthy, not letting them play. Listen, if this was March 2020, when we didn't really know much about it and and whatnot, yes, if, if they were positive, even if they were healthy, I could see you know lot, not letting them play. But being that this league is 99% vaccinated, um, there's, to me, it just doesn't make any sense to a test players who are healthy and b even if they are positive, hold them out. Um, I think I think yes. If you're if you're sick, then yeah, be put in COVID protocol. But other than that, enough is enough. And Steve Eiserman and Connor Hellbook, good for you for speaking out. Um, hopefully, when the pause is over, they they change their protocols and we move on with our lives here because it's getting ridiculous. And Phil, there was one more uh, tweet that I wanted to put up about. Uh, this one, where it's saying management and everyone's all getting fed up, uh, calling in a charade. I mean, it's. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? It's probably the case. I mean, these guys want to play. They want to get paid. They want to play. They want to do what they enjoy doing, and it, it, it's getting tiring. The narrative continues to change left and right. Uh, supposedly this new variant isn't as deadly as the original. Everybody's vaccinated except for Bertuzzi and Bertuzzi, you know, he can't go to Canada. So that that's his choice. But uh, I mean, this comment right here from David, I mean, I, I, he doesn't understand why the NHL is having such a problem. The NFL seems to have a fraction of the cases in quarantines. I I mean, it, 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 these are all good questions to be asking It, it, it just after a while, when does it end? When does it end? When when does the madness stop? Um, I, I just, I don't know. If they want to play and they're healthy and they're asymptomatic, I mean, I, you know what? Let the players do what the players want to do at this point. Because if, if you're not, if you're not going back into total lockdown, then what's the point of, of all this madness then? Yeah, I, I got to say that it, there are so many other problems that right now are starting to bubble up because of this. Because now you have, uh, with them withdrawing for the Olympics, you have three weeks of games that you, you just emptiness you have to fill now. 
So oh, they'll be the the, the the postponed games will be made up in that time. Yeah, but there's not three weeks worth of games. No, it, this is but there's a couple maybe days. like a week and a half or, or more. Well, first off, if they could undo the Ranger Islander game on St. Patrick's Day, that would be nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. But I mean, they were also and they're just they're talking about making games, uh taking them and moving them up depending on building availability. Like this is this is going to be an absolute just, just, uh, I, I cluster F. Uh, I'll say that I wanted to say the actual word, but it, it's without talking about the actual politics of the situation. It's uh, you got players that they're healthy and the flu's gone around NHL locker rooms. If you want to say it's a, it's not the flu. Fine, it's it's not the flu, but it's. It, it's it seems to me this is a little bit of virtue signaling and the league it, this might be a tipping point for them to say look we're just going to go through games this is just what happens well and there's never going to be a covid zero so- that, that's that that's exactly it. and that's why adam silver was was bang on they have to um you know they they have to readjust the protocols they really do cuz um you know people players are still going to test positive um and if they're healthy let them play. I mean, every, like I said, not to keep repeating ourselves, but literally the whole league minus one player is vaccinated. Everyone's vaccinated. Um, you know, and these are the, the top athletes in the world. Uh, and if if they are experiencing symptoms, they're like having like the sniffles or a cold. It's just um, it's just ridiculous. But um, listen, I, I think the league will probably, you know, revisit some of the protocols after seeing what the NBA and NFL is transitioning to. Um, for them to be the only ones, you know, doing something different um, makes no sense. And typically these leagues are like copycats. If one does one thing, usually the others follow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, maybe the only wrinkle to this is the NHL has a lot more Canadian teams, obviously, than the NBA and the NFL is none. So maybe that plays a role in it with the, you know, cross-border traveling. Um, but even still, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just absurd. Um, well, you're going to have a lot of that. You're going to have the, uh, the provinces in Canada and the Canadian government, as well as certain states in uh, down here that they're just going to be like, nah, you're going to need to keep those, uh, like strong protocols. Madison square garden is requiring five-year-olds to show proof of vaccination. More on that later, by the way. That's... It's it, there's there's a bit of just madness with this, and I'm not a doctor. I know this because there isn't a there isn't a, a plaque on my wall that says I'm a doctor. But although I'm Doctor Love, ladies, but it's just oh, I, I don't think uh, it, it, this is this is madness. I'm just gonna go back down to Phil before I say something dumber. Well, did did you first? I just wanted to uh, just he. You know, AZ wrote this comment, CA. Uh, I don't know if you saw the problem. The pro- and this wasn't satire or a joke. Apparently in Ontario, they're changing the rules now where at these events, you can't eat food, you can't buy any drinks, and you can only stand up when a goal is scored to cheer. Because right? they, <laughs> they, want, they, want, they want to eliminate food and beverage because that gives people a reason to take off their mask. So by doing that, they say people are going to remain wearing masks the whole time. And that is the most absurd and ridiculous stipulation um, that I have that I, I have seen in a long time. Um, I mean, I know uh, again, I, without getting too much into politics, I know like we, people have their thoughts on you know our president and the administration and whatnot. But Canada, man, like doing stuff like that, like are you are you kidding me? Like the, the Canadians playing in front of no fans the other day and going to fifty percent capacity, like what are you what are you doing? Like just just stop it. It's it's just tiring. It's just well, it's tiring. the Arizona Coyotes. Tiring. They don't have to worry about standing. Filk. Uh, at what point do do they just shut down sports then? Because and and I get that the NHL is never going to go for that because it's a business and they, they they can't endure that again. I mean, you you've seen the financial implications from what's happened to this league from the the previous shutdown in 2020. But it just it, it it's overkill. It's, it's overkill. This isn't going anywhere. We're going to have to learn how to live with it, just like everybody did with influenza all those years ago. Excuse me. So 
we're, we're, we're going to have to learn how to live and, and get back to a normal life. It, it just, I, I've seen it, 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 even as a, as a pro wrestling fan, I watch a lot of new Japan pro wrestling and it, over there, you can't cheer. They wear masks in their seats and you, you can't even cheer. You have to stop and clap. So, I, I mean, it works and their, their crowds still get very loud that way, but it, it's, I don't know. I'm just over all this. I'm tired of it. it, it it's just annoying. And it, 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 if if the narrative wasn't changing constantly and this wasn't so politicized, I, I, I could understand it at that point. But this is all just it, it's annoying. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm sick of it. I just want life to go back to normal and want to be able to enjoy sports without all this madness and political nonsense involved with it. So. And the economic repercussions of all this is starting to rear its head. We know about the Phoenix, uh, sorry, Arizona Coyotes. I caught myself saying that twice already. Yeah. Um, and uh, there might be problems going with the pandemic for the Calgary Flames too, and that new pro- uh, that new uh, building that they're gonna that they were trying to get. We don't even there, know what's going to be happening. The, the only the only aspect in this that I that I kind of agree on, and I think Frank Ciarovelli said, other than like, you know. The pandemic itself, one of the reasons why uh, games are being postponed is for the competitive balance. People pay a lot of money to see top players. And with so many of these players on COVID protocol, um, I guess they feel it's not fair to have so many teams having AHL call-ups. And that's why that, that's why I get so much so frustrated. So it's okay now, but it was okay when the Islanders are playing Andy Andreoff and Grant Hutton and, yeah. all, these, and all these guys. That was okay. But now, I, I totally get you being pissed there. The, the only thing I'll say in response to that is that, unfortunately, the Islanders and the Senators were like guinea pigs in all this. They were they were trying to work out the kinks and see how it would relate with them and how it would work. So, unfortunately, the Islanders and the Senators really got the uh, the crap end of the stick. And they Boy, had it. for it. And... So, but the other news that comes with this is that the NHL officially withdraws from the Olympics. Now, we've been advocating just don't go anymore. Yeah. No matter how much we wanted to see the best and the best of the world against each other. And it's, it's something that it's disappointing. But also, Phil, can you think of some positives with this now? I'm I'm of the ilk or the mindset rather that if you I, I I'd rather focus on the NHL team than the Olympics. They don't mean nearly as much to me as <laughs> my team doing well and being on track. Um, if the positive in this is that you don't have to worry about a player going overseas, getting like a false positive test or two false positive tests. And being over in China for three to five weeks because he can't come home. Because, I mean, that, that would be ridiculous. So I don't blame them for not wanting to go at that point. Um, and the cool thing is, is that while the Olympics are going on, you can watch the Olympics and you can watch NHL makeup. So there's even more hockey to watch now. So if, we, if we're going to look at a glass half full, that that's my <laughs> glass half full right there. Uh, Anthony, go. I, I haven't said that the – you know, prior that they shouldn't be going to the Olympics based on everything going on. And, and really mostly just because of the quarantine rules, if they could track COVID when they're there. Um, but needless to say, I'm still disappointed that at the end of the day, we're not going to be watching NHL players play for, you know, their home countries. Um, it just takes, it just takes away from, a, takes away from it for a little bit. Like I'll still watch. Um, but I think competitive balance is uneven now because as you guys know, Russia can use, Russian KHL players, which is ridiculous because that's a pro league, probably, probably the second best league in the world. But yet they're going to be able to add um, really anybody they want to the roster where, you know, USA is going to have uh, collegiate players. And, you know, like I, I made reference last Olympics, Brian Gianta played. He was a free agent. So, you know, I guess Bobby Ryan could play for Team USA. Um, but, I mean, Canada, all those countries, they, they're they not going to be able to compete with the talent that Russia is going to be able to play with, with their top KHL players playing for them. So in my opinion, I mean, yeah, anything can happen, but I think this just basically hands Russia the gold medal for the second 
consecutive Olympics. Um, so I think in the in the event that I mean I know it shouldn't matter because Donald Fear said in 2026 the NHL players will be back in the Olympics, but in the event that you know in future Olympics for whatever reason they don't use NHL players, they should revisit that where where Russia can't use professional KHL players because it like I said it, it affects the competitive balance. But um, I get why they did it. Listen, the three to five week rule is ridiculous if they tested positive, um, but you know I. I I guess, you know, I'm upset, but like I said, uh, being everything that was going on, it didn't make sense for them to go. But um, I'll still watch, but it's just not going to be as fun. I'll say this. The NHL, I think, lucked out on this one because now they don't have to answer questions that the NBA is has been answering for the last two, three years with, uh, with uh, their relationship over there and all the politics that's going on over there. The NHL doesn't have to answer those questions. Those have to be asked of them. Sure, you'd, you'd love to tap into that market, but now you don't have to think about it right now. Look, it's as far as the players go, and their well-being and their health, their best thing was to be here. Like I said before last week, I want Chris Kreider nowhere near the Olympics right now. I, I would, And no one would want McDavid over there. No one would want, and Anthony would want Brock Nelson or Matt Barzell going, especially with your season hanging by a thread. And again, like you said beforehand, it's kind of unfair when you look back at it going, and we talked about it last week. Did the NHL mishandle the, the situation for the Islanders? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they did. Yeah. Now, is it the reason it's, it's a reason for four of their losses, not 11, but that's a different story. Um, but again, that's, it's just, that's just what we need to do. We need to get away from that and just pull out completely it's it, it just makes more sense. But we're going to move on from that right now. Guys, what do you think about the NHL not going to the Olympics? And what do you think about their pause this week? And um, there was also the the comment. I just want to throw this tweet in there. It was the one you put in the group chat, Ant. It was, uh, every single NHL game is canceled tonight because players got the sniffles. Meanwhile, the NBA has a full slate of games going on tonight while battling the same issues. Not good for Ryan Whitney's ongoing skit that the NHL is tougher than the NBA. To um, whoever that tweet was, I think it's Foley was the name on it. No, that's not the case. This is It started with the Canadian government saying they weren't going to allow cross-border traffic. There were plenty of people. It just no. NHL players are much tougher than NBA players. You guys rested players because they were old. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out. Any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.